Hey everybody, and welcome to Minute Rounds. I'm your host, Dr. Dave, and today we're going to be talking about COVID testing. Now there are some options out there, but there are important things that you need to know. So let's get started. So before we jump into the types of tests, there are two concepts that you need to be familiar with when we talk about diagnostic testing. Those are sensitivity and specificity. So sensitivity has to do with catching all positive cases of the disease. So for instance, let's imagine that we have 100 people in front of us and all of them actually do have COVID. If you have a test that's 100% sensitive, that means that all 100 of those people will get a positive result from that test. If the test is 80% sensitive, then 80 will have a positive test. But that also means that 20 will have a negative test. Now that's a false negative since these people actually do have COVID, but the test came back incorrectly negative. On the flip side, you have specificity, which basically has to do with how well you can trust a positive result. So if I'm seeing someone and I give them a COVID test that's 100% specific and they get a positive result, then I can be confident that that result is actually due to COVID disease and not to anything else. So it's a true positive as opposed to a false positive. Both of these concepts are important, but we tend to give more weight to one or the other, depending on the test that we're doing and the reason that we're doing it. Now, during this COVID pandemic, the more important of the two is sensitivity because we want to catch all cases of a condition. If someone comes to see me who has COVID and I give them a test, I want their test to come back positive. I don't want any false negatives. So let's talk about the type of tests that are available. The first are molecular tests, the most common being a PCR. Now, this is the gold standard for diagnosis of COVID-19 disease. Why? Well, because they have a good sensitivity and specificity. If done correctly with a good nasopharyngeal swab, the sensitivity can be very high. Now, you may notice that I'm not giving you actual numbers because honestly, those are hard to find, and it depends on a lot of variables, like the person doing the swab and the type of swab that they did and the actual biology of the patient. But for the most part, the sensitivity is around 80 to 95%. The other good news is that the specificity is very good. It's almost 100%. So if you get a positive test, you can be assured that that positive test is from COVID disease and not from anything else. So it's a true positive. Now, what are some drawbacks of this test? Well, the first is time. It takes time to get these results, anywhere from 24 hours up to two or three days or longer. And when we're talking about a virus like this, that's a really long time that can make management decisions difficult. Now, another drawback has to do with how you get the sample. I mentioned that the sensitivity is very good if you get a good nasopharyngeal swab. Well, a nasopharyngeal swab looks like this. And if you look at this picture and have this kind of reaction, well, you wouldn't be wrong. This test is not comfortable to do, but that's what gives us the best sensitivity. Now, here's the problem. I see a lot of these drive-up clinics where you drive up, roll down your window, they hand you a swab, you do the swab, you hand it back to them. So listen guys, just no. So maybe some of you guys out there are troopers, but I'm willing to bet that most people, if you hand them a swab, are not going to do this to themselves. So that means you're not getting a nasopharyngeal swab, you're getting a nasal turbinate swab or something different. Either way, the sensitivity really starts to drop. So if you are going to get a PCR test, please make sure that you see a healthcare professional who has been trained in how to get a good sample. If you're gonna get a test, we wanna make sure it's a good test that we can get good results from. All right, so the next type of test is an antigen test. And this is what I really wanted to talk to you guys about today because I feel that the antigen test has the potential to be dangerous. The antigen test is like a flu test. You go in, you get a sample, they run the sample, and five minutes later you have an answer. And that is the biggest benefit of this kind of test. That quick answer is a great tool against a virus like this. Another benefit is the specificity, which is very good. It's almost 100%. So if you get a positive result, we can feel confident that it's due to COVID and not to anything else. So it's a true positive. The real trouble with this test is the sensitivity, which can be very variable depending on which data that you're looking at, but on the whole is less than that of a PCR. Now, if you look at the manufacturer's data, they will tell you that the sensitivity is 95% or better and is equal to that of the PCR. Now, this is coming from the companies who are trying to sell you the product, so you have to keep that in mind. If you look at independent review of sensitivities, it can be as low as 30%, which is almost useless for a diagnostic test. The biggest thing you have to be careful with 
and a test that has a low or variable sensitivity are false negatives. So a false negative is if you come and see me and we get a COVID test that comes back negative, but you in fact do have COVID-19 disease. So this is a false negative. Now you are also falsely reassured about this and you go on about your life. You don't quarantine, you don't isolate, and you can see how this virus can propagate in the community. Here's a very common scenario that I see. So someone at my work tested positive and I was in the same room with them. I'm feeling fine, but I want to see if I have COVID or maybe I'm one of those asymptomatic carriers. So you run, you get an antigen test and it's negative and you feel good about that. The trouble is, is that there could be a false negative there, which can place you and those around you at risk. Now the performance of this test is best when you have symptoms like fever, cough, shortness of breath, and you get the test within five days of having symptoms. Outside of those parameters, I really don't feel like the sensitivity or the accuracy of this test is helpful to us. So if you want to get an antigen test, please discuss this with your doctor so that we can figure out the right test for you. And let me give you one practical way to think about this. If you think that you have COVID-19, it is fine to go get an antigen test. Because the specificity is good, if you get a positive test, we can trust that and that answers our question but we might not be able to trust a negative test because of the risk of false negatives. So many times we have to follow that up with a PCR test. Now lastly and quickly, we have the antibody tests. So in a nutshell, antibody tests are not used for diagnosis of COVID-19. They're used to see if you've been exposed to COVID-19 in the past and you've developed antibodies to it. The problem there is that there are some good studies that show that especially in people who have mild disease, those antibodies disappear within a month or two. So you could have had COVID, but the test will come back negative after a few months. To be honest, I haven't found much good clinical use for this. We use it for academic purposes or if patients are curious, but it really isn't helpful in terms of making management decisions. All right, guys, so there's the quick story on the available testing. Now here it is again to summarize. PCR tests are the gold standard, but they do take time to come back and you have to get a good nasopharyngeal swab sample. Antigen tests you really have to be careful with. Yes, they are quick and they are convenient. The specificity is good so we can trust a positive test, but we might not be able to fully trust a negative test. So you have to keep that in mind. And lastly, antibody tests, they're just not used for diagnosis. Okay, so it is September 2020 and in COVID world, things are changing weekly. So I expect that the performance of these tests will improve and that we will change how and when we use them. So it's important for you to stay informed so that you can pick the right test for you. What I really, really hope to get is a good antigen test that is fast and is sufficiently sensitive so that we can trust it for regular use. That will be a huge weapon in the fight against this virus. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm your host, Dr. Dave, and this has been Minute Rounds. If you found this helpful, please hit subscribe so that you won't miss out on any future videos. And please don't forget that kindness is always the best medicine. So take some time today to do a random act of kindness for somebody around you. Y'all take care.